Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to make a Halloween card featuring house mouse stamps. Uh, this is such a fun image. I've had it for a few years. I believe you can find it, find it from Stampendous and I'm coloring this with alcohol markers. I'm using the Ohuhu brush tip markers, the new 72 set. I'll link that down below. It just went live. The 48 set they came out with a couple months ago sold out within hours. So if you did want these markers, I would suggest checking them out sooner rather than later. I'm base coating the entire entire pumpkin in with the color Y4, which is kind of like a um, light peach orange color. And I'm doing that because it just makes it a little bit easier to blend and layer, especially if you're a beginner and you haven't done much marker coloring. Having that base of, um, of your lightest color will help everything kind of blend together. Now I'm going in with YR3, which is a nice bright orange, and I am starting at the bottoms and just kind of flicking the ink up and then going in on the tops. And any place I see the stippling, and that's something you'll see with all these house mouse stamps is that they have kind of little stippling dots. That's a great place to add your shadow. So I'm going in with that brighter orange, the YR3, and adding that shading. I went in with some Y3 yellow and I colored in the stem and also the flesh that you could see on the inside of the pumpkin. And then I went over the stem with this kind of sap green color, which was GY5 but you can use whatever you have at home. I'm darkening in the uh, jack-o'-lantern mouth area that's because they haven't put the candle inside yet, so it wouldn't be glowing. So I just darkened that up with a warm gray, but decided I will darken it up with a darker brown later because it just wasn't quite dark enough. I am using YR4, which is a nice um, kind of apricot color on the faces, ears, feet, and hands of the house mouse, just to keep it nice and easy. And then I'm using a warm gray three to do the shading on the mouse and warm gray one for the inside of the bodies. I'm using that sage green, it's G9 to color the matchstick and the first coat on the candlestick. And then I'm going in with um, this nice teal color, which is PB9, I believe, to do the shading. Now I'm going over the pumpkin with Y2, just to bring out some warmth. And I'm going in with another layer of that G9 CG green color on the matchbox, just to give it a little bit of, um, of a shading. You can go in and keep adding colors to your pumpkin until you're happy with how much saturation you have. And if you feel like it's gotten a little streaky, just go over the entire thing with a nice yellow like a Y2 and that will just smooth everything together. Now, of course, if you have a different brand of marker or your markers have different numbers on them, go ahead and just eyeball it and use whatever's closest. Just try to get about three shades for your pumpkin at least so that you can get a nice light, medium and dark tone. And you can always go in with your colored pencils if you don't have enough markers to complete your picture. If you're just starting out, it can get real expensive to get a lot of markers. So um, just go in with your colored pencils, white gel pens, add your highlights, add your shading, and make it work. I really like these fluorescent colored pencils from Prismacolor because I can go over areas and really make them glow. And I wanted that pumpkin to really kind of have a nice shine to it. Now, something else you can do with alcohol markers that's really fun is that you can make your other embellishments match. So I've got some seam binding here and I'm just um, going to, and you can do this either before or after you color it. I am going to just spray it with rubbing alcohol. Then I scribbled my marker on a piece of plastic and I just ran the, um, the ribbon through it. Now you can also color right on the marker, but I would recommend using the chisel side and doing it before you spray it with the alcohol. If you want to color right on the, um, right on the fabric, it'll just give you a more saturated color and will blend easier, but you can do it in whatever order. The only downside to coloring on the ribbon after you put the alcohol on is that your nib will soak up a little bit of that alcohol and it will be, um, it'll take a few minutes to recharge back to the normal color. So, um, you know, do it either way, but I think it's definitely easier to color it first and then spray it with the alcohol because you're probably going to need to add more anyway to dilute it. And then you want to crinkle it up, smush it up so the colors mix and blend, and then let it dry completely before you add it to your project. You can also use your alcohol markers to color any light or white objects such as plastic flatback pearls, buttons, or even wooden buttons to make it match your layout. So keep that tip in your brain anytime you need to make something match. 
I wanted to put a background in, but I didn't want to color that with markers because it can be very difficult to get a large area smooth when you have so many little things to color around. So I'm using this uh, toothbrush style makeup brush in ink to fill that in. And I'm using some green and some teal because I thought those colors would really pop against the red orange colored pumpkin. I wanted it to be a little bit darker though and I decided instead of trying to go in with more ink I would use some chalk for a nice soft effect and also I can get this look that um, kind of uh, get this kind of glowing look from the pumpkin by leaving a little bit of a gap between the color and the um, and the white kind of around the pumpkin. That saw gives it a soft glow. I'm stamping Have a Mice Halloween on the inside of the card because I like puns and I think it's cute. It was from another House Mouse stamp set that I had. And now I'm assembling everything. I had some old pattern paper that was orange and green and black. And I thought it looked really nice and Halloween-y. I'm putting that on some orange cardstock. And then I'm going to tie that dried ribbon that we made. See how it retains those gorgeous crinkles? I think it's so pretty. Um, and I'm tying that around and I'm going to do a double bow. So to do that, just make a regular bow like you tie your shoes and then you would simply tie your bow loops together to make that second bow and um, it works really good especially when you've cut your ribbon a little long and you don't want to trim off the ends or retie it so you just tie it in another bow again then you've got this four looped bow that's really casual pretty and kind of vintage looking which I like and then I thought it'd be cute to put a button on top of the bow and I decided that I would tie it on with a little bit of twine because it just gives it a little extra something a little extra texture and it ties in the green from the pattern paper and from the ink that I put around the image. So anytime you can reuse just a few colors you'll get a much more chic look than if you go with every you know marker in the box. When you you know limit your palette to like I did teal, green, and orange for the most part it just gives it a much more cohesive look. So if you feel like your cards are looking a little crazy or unprofessional or just all over the place, just try limiting your color palette and you'll be surprised at how much more professional it makes them look. And I'm just trimming off the ends here and I like that bow on a bow look anyway. I think that's really cute. And then I'm going to adhere this panel onto my card base and then just kind of embellishment, embellish it with a few colored pearls. Now these pearls already came colored but I did want to show you that uh, you could color them with markers if you wanted to because you don't always have enough of the right color and it's nice to be able to alter it using supplies you've also used on your card. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll have links to all the products down below. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.